So, Amy, how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. It's good to see you again. Good to see you again as well. Good to see you again as well. So, let's dive right into the dragons. Um, <laughs> Tom would be uh, very proud, you know, our, our fearless... Uh, our fearless team leader over there. <laughs> so start with, uh, tell me, or tell the audience, I guess, what is the biggest difference between season three and what has come in uh, prior? Well, we have an amazing new character that I'm a huge fan of, June's older brother, played by Vincent Tong, who is just hysterical. I'm a fan. And um, we are... Having these kids or teenagers go into the most dangerous realm of all, which is the fire realm, because not only do they have to confront all different sorts of dragons, just getting into the realm and staying alive is hard enough. So Alex, whoop, whoop, uh, my character, comes up with fire suits for uh, her friends and she builds them from scratch and so she literally makes all of them fireproof but not without a couple of tests you know you have to test prototypes and Tom of course uh, Colorson's like I'll do it I'll do it so he may or may not have burnt hair here and there but um, but I'm just really proud you know that our little Alex who prefers uh, computers and gadgets to humans uh, comes up with a little help from the dragons with this fire suit so that they could adventure into season three fire realm. I uh, liked how uh, the episode that kind of focused on your moms, or oh, yeah. not your moms, but <laughs> Alex's moms. Um, mm -hmm. I So obviously Alex was faced with like a tough decision in that episode um, surrounding the, the fireflies uh, between her mom and 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 helping you know the dragon well fire firefly dragons i should say yeah <laughs> um so what decision do you think you would have made in that situation oh that's what i love about shows like this it's like there's cool dragons and there's you know thunder doing his electricity stuff and driving security nuts because they don't know why the cameras are going down and you have like you know dragons eating cheesy loops and and uh and it has all that fun and adventure, but then it also has, like you said, decisions of what do you do? Do you do you protect your family and 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 help them continue to be happy, right? Because they love this little, they don't know it's a dragon, they just think it's a pet. Or do you do what you do as a dragon writer, which is protect, you're the protector of dragons. And so do you honor that mission? So I think I would protect the dragons as much as I love my family in real life. And as much as Alex loves her moms, I think that, you know, their mission, their duty is to protect a species that this world thinks doesn't exist, right? The modern world thinks that dragons are a myth and they're not real and they're legends. And so these kids, these teens are the only ones that know the truth. And they're like, no, 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 dragons do exist. And we have to keep them a secret from our parents and the world because otherwise they'll be in danger. So I think um, I think I would have done the same thing. And you got to protect the creatures. <laughs> so June's older brother is a fun new character. Can you yeah. talk about him at all? And just kind of explain him for the audience. Oh, yeah. He's super vain. He's all about his hair. He's doing selfies at all times. Complete egomaniac hysterical he's literally such a fun character i was cracking up i've never met the actor who plays him but i'm a fan um and and so he's super bored at this facility where you know the show takes place 1500 years after the how to train your dragon movie franchises and in this world dragons do not exist they're a myth they're a legend of the past they're not real and all of a sudden there's a fissure in the middle of the earth that smiles deep and it opens up and scientists from all over the world come to figure out what happened and they bring their kids and their kids are teens and they figure out that the fissure was caused by dragons and um and so they're keeping it a secret so anyway june's older brother is super bored he's here because his scientific mom who's in charge of you know the the expedition who's a total straight edge is really strict and he's bored out of his but he's the cool kid you know he's like 
he's like the Fonz, like old school Fonz, right? If, if right. he would be riding a motorcycle and have his like muscle car. And so he thinks that his sister's like the biggest dork and he doesn't think, you know, Dragon Dragon Club is real. And he's like, you guys are a bunch of nerds and dorks. And she's like, it's just cosplay. You know, it's just like Dungeons and Dragons. Like, this is what we do. It's no big deal. And so it's so fun to see the cool kid get so bored, you know, and then he gets suspiciously close to, uh, to, you know, exposing their secrets. So you'll just right. have to watch season three to see what happens. <laughs> but he's my favorite character. I love him. I love your nails, by the way. I just saw. Oh, them. thank you. I was just saying, I love your purple nails. <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanted to know if you have any um, input on uh, the Hispanic, Hispanic, not side of your character but the hispanic depth of uh your character and her family uh, like there are lines sometimes that are in spanish i was curious if you have any input on that or if there's somebody on the writing team who focuses on that for you uh both so uh i always try to add as much spanish as i can and some spanish is in the scripts which i love uh justina machado who plays my mom who i've known for years chicago actress um she she's you know she's always like oh let's call the dragon pollito, pollito. i was gonna yeah, say pollito. Pollito. right and, and uh and so so she's like mija you know what i mean and then there's a couple times that Alex will say, I love her zingers because I think Alex is like an old curmudgeon y old man. And she's like total pessimist, like glass half empty, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, Debbie Downer. And so I love that once in a while she'll just be like, no, me yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so in. deflated and Spanish. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's that balance where like a lot of Latin teens understand Spanish more than they speak it. So you want to be truthful to the representation of like not every Latino in the United States speaks Spanish. So Alex obviously speaks English, but then you know, her parent, her mom does speak. Spanish and speaks a little Spanish to her so she understands Spanish and then once in a while Alex will throw in a zinger in Spanish and it'll just be so fun so I think they did a beautiful job of capturing that um that generation of like young Latinas and I couldn't be more proud in um you know she's all American and she's 15 and she she's an she's an all-American teen but she also has her Latina roots, which is beautifully organically portrayed in the series. So now you're three seasons in, I wanted to know if there are <clears throat> any audience uh, members that maybe have reached out or said that they uh, connect with the moms, or like you having two moms or, um, or your Hispanic character, like you had said, how proud you are. Have you had any audience members reach out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing a lot of Comic Cons for Lucifer and Dexter. And so it's the first time actually last month that I started signing stuff for Alex and Feathers, you know, her dragon. So it was really nice. And like they, you know, they said, we didn't have this as a kid. Like we didn't have Dora the Explorer. We didn't have Latinas in animation when we were kids. So thank you so much. And, and you know, and the little girls would like cosplay Alex because she's got her, you know, her big glasses and her little like rain boots. And, and um, so she's, so yes, I have, I have heard, um, you know, fans personally, just about, like you said, just seeing themselves represented. And I think it's probably one of the few animated shows that has two Latina moms. You know, I can't, I don't know um, if it's the only one, but it seems like it's one of the few. And, and like I said, it's, it just is beautifully woven into the narrative of this great story. And I think that that really is 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 the the goal, you know, to just have everyone feel seen and represented, but also have these characters be relatable. I mean, one of the most beautiful parts of that episode that you brought up with the moms is them feeling like first they're encouraging Alex to get out of the house. You don't have any friends. You're totally so socially awkward. You're introverted. You got to get out. You got to explore. All you do is play on your computer, play video games. She's a gamer. She's a total tech genius. Introvert doesn't want to leave her room. 
And then she finally leaves her room. She discovers dragons exist. She bonds with feathers. And then her mom's come into her room and she's gone because she's out with her friends. And then as a parent, she thinks, I miss her. Like it, the house is quieter without her. And I just miss having my teen daughter around. And to me, that's universal, right? It, and she just happens to be a Latina mom. And so I think that's the beautiful story of you know, I love at the end of the episode, she's like, so are you going to go out with your friends? And Alex is like, no, I'm just going to hang out with my moms. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really cute just the way that, um, yeah, I love that episode so much because I think it has so much adventure, but also just so much heart. So you have Feathers, obviously Feathers is probably your favorite, but if you were not not Alex but you which of those dragons do you think would fit you the best Plowhorn yeah I mean I'll tell you why because Plowhorn is the runt of her tribe okay and she has like one eye and she <laughs> is like just like they meet her when she's getting bullied by the bigger plow horns you know and and so I just love that she's like this little scrappy underdog. She's got one eye. She's smaller than everyone else. Like she, she, she isn't a beautiful dragon. I mean, Thunder is just adorable and like Wu and Wei are so cool. And all these dragons are like super, you know, super cool. And, and she's like this stocky rhinoceros, like uh -huh. little, like clumsy, you know, one-eyed dinosaur looking rhinoceros. <laughs> You know, like, and so I just love that that she that that so I relate to her. You know what I mean? Not the not the prettiest one in the in the in the group, and not the coolest, and and she's you know kind of scrappy and janky. <laughs> and she just and she just um and she just finds her place you know she finds her people so that's what I think this is so beautiful about the show is like you find your people whether you're Tom Cullerson who just dives in head first to adventure and has no fear gene and as Alex says no self-preservation gene or whether you're you know like Marcus's character who's like a doctor uh, you know, son of a military dad, but he's like the doctor of the animals, which is so cool to see like a young black teenager who is on the track to be a veterinarian. Like how cool is that representation, you know? Or like June, who is writing this beautiful Chinese inspired mythology, Wu and Wei dinosaurs that are polar opposites of each other, like literally fire and ice, and one's hot tempered and one's super chill. And she loves like mythology and tarot cards and history, you know, and then you have Alex, oddball, socially awkward. And it's so beautiful to see these different dragons with different personalities and different teens with different personalities, like find their group and their family with each other just like this group of misfits so that that's the thing i love most about the show so with if there's this uh, if in looking at a potential season four mm -hmm. uh what would you like to see happen with alex oh gosh well i would love to see her continuing to come out of her shell um I think that she's come a long way from not having any friends and being super scared of her own shadow to coming in and saving the day with Feather's sonic scream. I mean, with her eyes closed and it's like riding the roller coaster, kicking and screaming and you didn't open your eyes, but you went on the roller coaster, you know? <laughs> so, so I would love to see her kind of continue to spread her wings. I'd love to see her really let her guard down and open up about and find like true, like true, true, um, you know, vulnerability in just letting people in. Um, she's still snarky, you know what I mean? She's still like, as soon as they confront some big bad dinosaur or dragons, she's like, well, it's been nice knowing you all. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like she's, she's just so, like doomsday she's like doomsday and so it would be nice to see her be somewhat up grow into somewhat of an optimistic uh 
you know, we're not all going to die and also open up about uh, caring about her friends, right? Because she hasn't really done that. She hasn't really admitted how she feels about them. So it'd be really cool for her to just um, not cover up how she feels with sarcasm. Nice. So I I think it's interesting. I think it'd be interesting. They haven't um, touched on Alex's sexuality yet, have they? No, no. I think that would be interesting to see whether, you know, whether any of that is inspired by her mom's or, you know, with her own journey and how she relates to her parents with that. I yeah. I think that would be something cool to see too for her. Yeah, I would love that. I mean, what I do like that we've done so far is just normalize that she has two moms. Like, I love that she, you know, doesn't even think twice about it. It's just her normal and everybody else, like nobody, you know, everybody else, no one is weirded out by it or, or, or uncomfortable, which I love. Um, as, as, as well as the other adult characters, like nobody, you know, uh, so, so yeah, I think that would be really cool too, to see, to see her on that journey as well. So I see that you still have your, uh, Wonder Woman black and gold behind you. I was just oh, curious yeah. if you were, if you have been working on any other writing, um, since we had spoken last. Yes, um, that's right. I, I showed you the panel, right? Of how excited yeah. I was to show the Latin characters. Um, which was awesome. <laughs> which was awesome. Well, they, I told you they put it on the back. Which and I then they flew about. over your, over your, or flew over where you were from, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, so cool. that, that, that's adorable. This, this may or may not be inspired by me wishing I was in Wonder Woman. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, uh, currently working on an original comic and um, may or may not be writing a project that AJ and I were just approached for in the near future, fingers crossed. And that's all I can say at this time for your own safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those NDAs. Um, yeah. Anything else other than uh, How to Train Your Dragons, uh, entertainment-wise, sorry, Dragons Nine Realms, entertainment-wise, um, anything you're coming out with your voice acting or acting? Yes, I am starring in a Netflix movie where I sing, dance, and play the piano. An official announcement will come out next Tuesday. I'm headlining, you know, this movie alongside Freddie Prince Jr. It's like, him his comeback which i'm he's he's phenomenal in it and um i do all my own singing and dancing and piano playing and it will be on netflix i can't tell you when because they will get very mad at me but they will announce it next tuesday and i'm so happy about it it has romance it has comedy it has drama it's um it has a very uh, strong Latino cast. Um, and I am so proud. We shot it in New York. Um, we have an incredible choreography team that worked with Mariah Carey back in the day and JLo and Shakira. And our editor did old school and Will Ferrell movies and our DP did Batman Forever. So I was literally like, uh, feel free to light me, just like you did with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> feel free to use the same light. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yes, I am beside myself. And, um, you know, Netflix seems to, to love it. And it will be out in the world very soon. And it will be announced. The title will be announced. And the release date will be announced in seven days which I might not even be able to tell you that, but they can't get mad at me for that, but it will be announced in seven days. So I would love for people to tune in because they seem to have loved the musical episode in Lucifer and the singing and the dancing. So after Netflix saw that musical episode in Lucifer, they're like, hey, do you wanna do you, wanna, you know, do this movie where you get to sing and dance? And I'm like, absolutely, sign me up. And it's finally coming to the world and I could not be more proud. Everyone worked really hard. So very excited. Uh like you probably never expected Lucifer to lead you to to that opportunity. That is amazing. 
Never, never. In fact, I think they were, they were uh, testing the movie and they're like, that's not her real voice. I mean, I was nervous, trust me, you know, but whew, I had to learn all the songs in like four days. It was just crazy. Like, we'll do an interview about that. Well, it's just like- it <laughs> Yeah, that's a crazy. whole other thing. It was crazy, you know, but um, oh my gosh, we shot it in so little time and everyone was just phenomenal. And we had the best dancers in the world. And it's, I, 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 I'm just so proud of everyone. And, and, um, and we discovered new talent. There's a 15 year old Latina who's named Deja, who just crushes it. And um, I'm excited for the world to see her. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think you have other interviews coming up, so I don't want to keep you uh, too long. Is there any last things that you'd like to say about uh, Dragon's Nine Realms or anything else that we didn't touch on? Just, just thank you and gratitude for getting us to season three. And I'm so glad, you know, people are loving it. And it's just, you know, a really fun action adventure with comedy and heart for the whole family, the whole familia. And, um, and I just, you know, can't wait for people to check out season three. Awesome. Thank you again so much. It has been a wonderful pleasure to speak with you again. Absolutely. Right back at you, Joe. We'll talk soon.